Hey everyone, and welcome to the September Board of Ed meeting. Mrs. Slunt, roll call, roll, 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 call, roll, please. Dr. Cordellino? Here. Mr. Daughtry? Here. Mrs. Fano? Here. Dr. Modrak? Here. Mr. O'Brien? Here. Mr. Rappaport? Here. Ms. Uckerman? Here. Mr. Palma? Here. Mr. Grau? Here. Mr. Parisi? Here. Ms. Amir? Here. Very good. Pledge of Allegiance, please. Thank you, and again, welcome, and i especially like to welcome our two student reps today. Uh, when I met them before, I told them they had to give me $5 every time they came, but they, they didn't believe me. And uh, why don't you introduce yourselves and give us a brief background, and then we can uh, get a report from you if there's not much happening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us, okay? Yep, definitely. I'm still getting used to the microphone, but... <laughs> So I'm Eric Parisi, I'm the uh, class president. I also play for the Mongol baseball team. I love, I love being a Mustang, coming here every day, I have a great time, and I'm very excited to be at this meeting. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, my name is Jolene Ammer. Um, I'm a very active member in all the things that MTHS has to offer. Um, I'm captain of the swim team, also an active member of the MTHS theater company, as well as the SAC president this year. And like Aaron said, I'm very proud to be a Mustang and very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much and welcome. <laughs> and as I mentioned to you before the meeting, if you'd like to report on anything that's happened now, up to tonight from the beginning of school or anything, and then uh, after you make your report, we might have a question or two, and if not, feel free to go home and do your homework. <laughs> Definitely. We, we have some stuff prepared. So we got uh, sports and athletic events. We have the Mongol football team. There was a game at Mendham on Friday. It was an away game, and we still had a ton of people in the crowd. It was a great time, and they came back and they got the victory. So they're already off to a great start to their year. And then actually today we had uh, a lot of sporting events. We had a cross-country meet varsity girls soccer game at home, a boys varsity varsity soccer game, a girls varsity tennis match, and a volleyball game. And we're hoping to see many more victories from them and hope we could hear back from them soon. And now I wanted to go into some past news. So, so far the school year has been off to a great start. Uh, we've been doing some in introductory and syllabus work at, in class and school is running very smoothly. Uh, we're especially happy to be back in one building and all under the same roof for the first time in a while. It Feel, feels different, but starting to feel a lot more normal again. And also the new freshmen have acclimated to the school well and they're finding that class is good as the Pierce's Leaders Club had another successful orientation. And also the support for the athletic events has been amazing and I see so many people out there and it's so much fun. Pass it over to Julie. Hi everyone, so um, I have more of the current events from more so this week. Um, students impatiently are awaiting the fall pep rally which starts next week. Um, we have theme days such as America Monday, Alliteration Day where students dress up as something that starts with the first initial of their name. So my name is Jolene so I'm dressing up as Jessie from Toy Story. Um, Montville Day where students wear uh, Montville clothing, um, superhero versus supervillain, um, and Spirit Week is bound to be a success. Um, and it all leads up to the prep rally, which will be on Friday, which should bring out some fun competition between the classes. Students are also looking forward to the um, USA Out home football game, where students are going to be wearing all USA colors and uh, flags and such at the game on Friday for football. Um, Carl Monaco, a senior wrestler, um, committed to Columbia yesterday, and he is the first Ivy League commit for the class of 2023, and we're very, very proud of him. The theater company is having auditions this week for the fall play, which is called The Twelfth Night. Um, it's a Shakespearean play. The choir department also sh uh, started auditions this week for a new a cappella group, giving students a chance to express themselves through song and hopefully compete later in the year with other a cappella groups across the country. 
So I'm going to pass it back to Aaron to discuss some future news. Yeah, so for future news, we have the Start Strong Assessment. I'm not sure if many of you guys know, but it's just English, math, science, standardized testing. And I, I think it'll be happening next week. I have to double check. But after that, we have Back to School Night, Wednesday the 21st. And both me and Jolene are both going to be student ambassadors, so we're looking forward to that. And then at the end of September, we're closing out with holiday break for the observance of Rosh Hashanah. And overall, I think it's been a really great month. And just getting back into the school year has been so much fun, and I'm, I'm having a great time. It's starting to feel like freshman year again when everything was normal before COVID, and it's been great. Thank you so much, guys, and uh, I will see you there Friday night. I won't be at the pep rally, but I'll be at the ball game on Friday night. And uh, feel free to come up to say hello. I sit at that bench on the top. <laughs> Thanks so much. Any questions of our student reps? Thank oh, you again, guys. Just to say that I'm very happy to hear that Charlie reduced the student activity fee from ten dollars down to five. <laughs> I, I'm happy too. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys, and you're welcome to stay. Or, as I mentioned before, feel free to leave. Okay. The uh, next part of the agenda is Section F, the remarks of the superintendent, Tom. Yeah, and it's, it's great to see the students here and hear the excitement that they're sharing with you. Uh, the administrators and I have been walking around a lot of the buildings at all the different levels and seeing the excitement throughout the buildings. You know, everybody's excited not to have the masks on, be back to pre-pandemic norms, and and just seeing the, the all the restrictions that have been in place for a little while have been removed. So that's that's excellent, and I'm glad the kids are feeling it as well. Uh, speaking, they just talked about the spirit uh, with 9/11 being uh, over the weekend, and then it was uh, commemorated yesterday in a lot of our schools. It was age appropriate at the different levels. So at the elementary level, they handled it in certain ways. Uh, it was a little bit more of a patriotic day. The kids were wearing red, white, and blue, and they talked about it depending on what grade they were in. Uh, and then at the upper levels, they were kind of a little bit more detail about that. But it is a day of remembrance for for all of us, and uh, those that we lost are not forgotten. Um, all right. With that said, I just want to do a, a statement uh, regarding something that happened back in June. So I'd like to take this opportunity to correct two issues that were made at the June 7th, 2022 board meeting by a member of the administration. The first was that the Living Lessons organizers attempted to contact an individual by the name of Nicholas Sandman. This statement was inaccurate. The second is that the speaker who, who was invited to the Living Lessons event is a self-proclaimed activist according to her social media pages. This self-identified title, however, did not have any bearing on the quality of the actual program that the students experienced that day. And finally, I'd like to apologize for the inaccurate statements that were shared with the public that night and to anyone who may have been offended by any comments expressed that evening. I believe that the Montville Township Public Schools offers a high quality education for all our students and will continue to do so in our classroom lessons. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, we have now business administrator report. presentation is in regard to the projects that we did this summer so in terms of the first area that we did we worked on the turf and the track at the high school both of which were due for replacement and so we took the opportunity to not only do a renovation that would include the rebranding of our new uh, logos and things like that but also to improve the drainage which was what was dilapidating the track from underneath so the first step which started in june we ripped up the old uh, carpet and then we installed new drainage throughout the entire field of 
the turf, which then helped with the drainage for the track. Uh, then came the actual coming back with the new carpet, and this is them laying this carpet. Um, interesting fact, the carpet actually all comes green, and they hand cut all of the different colors in, and then uh, sew them in by hand. So it was a pretty impressive thing to watch. And with that, let's go. Yeah, it's this completed project. Um, certainly it's exciting to have the football team and all the different sports being played on the field, so I definitely welcome anyone to come and, and see the game on Friday. The track is still closed. We are finishing up the last of that work in terms of putting its remaining top coats on, but by the end of the month that will be completed as well. Lazar was the other location that we had done a lot of work. We did work on a new vestibule that will provide additional security. So when we did um, inquire of local law enforcement as to suggestions on its security improvements, one of the ones that they had suggested was the addition of what's called an access control vestibule. It's an opportunity for the public to be held in a sort of waiting area before being allowed into the actual hallway of the school. And so we started this project here at Lazar. Uh, that included the carrying over of signage and colors. You'll notice that Lazar has been painted. What was red on these areas here has now gone to the green, that is the Montville green. And then the biggest change is the actual entranceway, where they pulled off the entranceway and now there's this really large overhang. That is the start of the vestibule. Unfortunately, we are affected by supply chain issues. And so the glass that is going to be installed to enclose this entire space is still delayed. Once that comes in, we'll then finish the rest of the interior of the vestibule and close it off. Valley View School received quite a lot of renovations. We redid the entrance to Valley View in order to provide an area for um, handicap accessibility as well as large areas here and here for outdoor classroom spaces. And so that's what it looks like right now. The soffit, again, we are having some supply chain issues. So the lettering and the actual product that we're putting on the soft that hasn't come in but this will be lettered with the logo for valley view on that in addition to that work which is easy to see there's additional work that's being done where all the univentilators are being replaced those univentilators are currently in the schools are original to the building and they have definitely done their time those univentilators are being installed inside, so it's not something you can see outside. However, when they're done, they will end up replacing the uh, condensing units for the ductless splits. And so that will clean up the outside of Valley View a little bit more. Lastly, we started a project that included the sister schools. Cedar Hill, William Mason, and Woodmont all have the exact same plan. And so, in all cases, the gym windows were very energy inefficient, and the external metal work that encloses the gym was beginning to dilapidate. And so as a result, we started at Cedar Hill, and that we are enclosing all of that metal work so that's to make it watertight and replace the windows. And right now, this is Cedar Hill as of today, actually, there are new panels that are being placed on the outside of the gym box, as well as the replacement of the windows. They're tying in the covering here to tie into the rest of the building in order to give it a nice unified look. Cedar Hill has started, although the project is running behind due to worker shortages, but they should be done by the end of September. They're then moving to Woodmont next, and then William Mason last, doing the exact same type of work. In addition to the panels, there will also be the logo for each of the individual schools. In the case of Cedar Hill, it's the Bulldogs. That'll be placed on the front of the building with additional signage for the name. And that is pretty much a summary of the projects for the summer. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you very much, Katine. Any questions of board members for Katine? 
part of that. Uh, it's too bad we have the supply problem, but everybody seems to be having the same problem in education, getting the equipment here on a timely basis. Uh, we now go to section G, which is committee reports, personnel, excuse me, facilities and finance. Uh, Karen? Thank you, Charlie. Uh, I'd like to thank Katine for the presentation. Uh, we had a meeting just before coming, uh, before closed session uh, today for facilities and finance, and we basically just went over what Katine shared with you. Um, the the uh, projects are really coming along very nicely, and I would like to thank Tom and Katine for a tour that they gave us, uh, some of the board members, um, the other day. It was very, uh, it was really nice to see what it looks like in real life and not just on paper. So if any of you have the opportunity, just drive around, take a look at the schools. All the schools are getting some exterior work done and uh, they really look nice. Thank you, Karen. Mm -hmm. Curriculum instruction, David? Uh, no report, but we are trying to schedule a meeting in the next I think it's the 20th, is it not? Yes. Andrea, the 20th? Yeah. Mr. O'Brien, policy and personnel in the no report. There is no report at this time, and we'll schedule a meeting when the administration says it's necessary. Thank you, Michael. Communications, Michelle? Um, the committee um, that was put together, um, headed by Stu Marinello, um, Dr. Gorman, uh, consisting of administrators, um, teachers, staff, parents, and I sit on it from the board, um, looking at different options for the website as our current provider will no longer be, um, you know, providing websites. So we've looked at four different, and had presentations from four different um, companies, and there's been a lot of uh, research, and things are moving along nicely in terms of next steps there. And in terms of the board communications committee, we'll be scheduling a committee meeting in the next couple of weeks to go over that and other items. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, safety and security, Mr. Rappaport? Uh, no report this week. Uh, liaison, school boards, Karen? Uh, thank you, Charlie. Uh, today there was an executive committee meeting which I attended uh, virtually. This is where New Jersey school boards officers meet with the directors of New Jersey school boards. Um, at that meeting, a lot of information was shared, but I wanted to just bring a couple of, uh, two items to the public and board's attention, and that has to do with two pieces of legislation that were signed uh, recently by the governor. The first is a school threat assessment team, and that will require public schools to develop threat assessment teams. Um, the next is the NJGPA as a field test for the class of 2023 requires the State Board of Education to administer the New Jersey Graduation Proficiency Assessment as a field test for the class of 2023. Uh, I'll have further legislative updates after Saturday. Saturday on the 17th, the Legislative Committee is uh, meeting and I chair that committee, so I'll bring back some more information then. Uh, very importantly, New Jersey School Boards has just advertised a candidate's briefing. Uh, this is a program for candidates, school board candidates. It's regionally provided, north, central, and south. And uh, this is an opportunity for candidates uh, running for school board, and I know we have several running, um, it will be an in-person regional candidates briefing to address the structure and responsibilities of local school boards in New Jersey. Participants will receive pertinent information on topics including an overview on the role of the school board member, legal requirements including criminal background checks and financial disclosures, the board as a policy making body, mandated training requirements, ethical considerations to avoid conflicts of interest, and resources available to board members. And we are very, very lucky that this event in the Northern Region is being held right here at the high school, I believe in the cafeteria. So any candidates out there, you are welcome to sign up and attend. I will be attending just to give some welcoming remarks as this is my home district. Um, 
just a, oh, I did want to mention that on Saturday's legislative committee meeting, we are very pleased that Assemblyman, Assembly Speaker Craig Coughlin will be joining us uh, to make some opening remarks and answer some questions. Uh, and the last thing I'll mention is, once again, workshop, which is the annual school board meeting down in Atlantic City. It'll be in person uh, this year, thank goodness. Uh, October 24th to October 26th and um, I'm happy that uh, my colleagues Charlie and Joe will be joining me there for all of the uh, good uh, workshops and, and lessons and networking that can be had. So that concludes my report. Thank you Karen. Uh, Morris County Mike? Uh, I was reminded by that. I was reminded by Dr. Cordolino uh, prior to the meeting, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong, that the uh, September meeting on this the 28th, correct, will be here, uh, be, be conducted right here in this very room. This very room. Okay, I'm just going to stay here the whole time to be here in time for that uh, on the 28th. Uh, just, Charlie, just one, I wanted to make sure, I don't, I'm not sure if I mentioned the date of the candidate's briefing, but it's uh, uh, September 29th. Joe, Educational Services. We have a meeting tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. It's virtual. Drug awareness. We have a meeting tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. <laughs> you better keep moving back and forth, buddy. I've got after. The athletic process is tomorrow night, right, Michael? Oh! But at the same time, okay, and right here in this very room again. This is a happening place, okay. <laughs> this is where it comes down, okay. So that will be tomorrow night, and I'll be here. And the voice of the Mustangs will be back on Friday night for the season. Mike is the voice of the Mustangs, so we had to put a plug in for that. Right? Uh, any PTC meetings? I don't think any have had, but we'll go through it. Uh, Cedar Hill. Uh, yep, uh, Cedar Hill met on September 8th, uh, basically it was an update on many items including facilities, committees, activities, and fundraising. It was a very large and enthusiastic crowd and uh, I was happy to be there. Thank you. Hillvale, uh, I have not been at the meeting. Joe Valley View. We have a meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Christine Woodnock. No report. No report. Woodnock. No report. Uh, Lazar Middle School? Uh, no report, but they do have their back to school night coming up on the 22nd, and you are encouraged to sign up for membership in the PTC. Thank you, David. And the high school? Uh, yes, we had the first meeting last night. Um, so uh, Mr. Sanford, as well as um, the assistant um, principals and uh, the directors and supervisors all attended and were introduced to the parents. Dr. Gorman also attended um, and gave some updates. Um, the PTC liaisons from the different subject areas, um, and I just want to say Mike Rapport and I attended the, the meeting. Um, the liaisons from the different subject areas gave updates uh, to the start of the school year in the arts, business, math, English, world sciences. Um, from the PTC business, there are three items really that were highlighted. Um, the pink apparel sale uh, ends tomorrow. That's in conjunction with the boosters. That's uh, for the pink out game that will be held on October 14th. And a portion of the proceeds are going to go to breast cancer. So contact members of the PTC or the boosters uh, to get your orders in by tomorrow. Um, PTC is very happy to do a um, regular teacher welcome back luncheon next week um, for high school parents. The email's gone out with items to sign up to donate. And it will look um, like it hasn't looked for two years. So we're really excited about that. And then the final item is all high school parents should be able to join the PTC. The information has been sent out. Um, it's a, you get access to our online directory, as well as um, students uh, to receive PTC scholarships their senior year. Parents must belong to the PTC for all four years. And it's just a great way to support the organization that does a lot for the school. So, Thank you, Michelle. Before we go into public participation, I would just like to report that uh, I attended the new staff meeting orientation, which I guess was held on August 22nd, Tom. Some new staff, 
And then on the opening, I spoke to the new staff at that time. And yes, they did all show up the first day of school, which was September 1st, I guess. And it was very enjoyable seeing them all. And I'd like to compliment, thank Scott Rosado, president of the MTEA, for all of their support over the years. And we look forward to working positively for you again. And, but please get the message to your staff. I was very impressed by them, and I thank them. Okay. Next part of the agenda is the public participation for any items that are on the agenda. So if you have any questions about any items that are listed on the agenda for action, this is the opportunity to ask them. If not, if you have a question that's not on the agenda, you'll be given the opportunity at the end of the meeting. Are there any questions on anything on the agenda? I think there's a couple of changes, uh, Mr. Russell, on the agenda. What? Uh, you need the microphone. What happened to the mic? It's there. Oh, can you use it, please? Okay. Um, can I ask a, a question about security at the schools? That would be at the end of the meeting, okay. Mr. Russell. Okay. All right, since there's none, I think there's two changes, right? Dr. Gorman, you had something for HIV, was it? Or yes, there's two corrections. J2, there is going to be an HIV report. That's, that's going to be updated on page 4. And there's a correction on page 13 and 6. Uh, the correct amount will be 19675 All right, so they'll make the two changes. All right, can I have a... Uh, a motion, please, on the Move. consent agenda. Okay. Get that again. All right, any questions as we go through? I, J, K, L, M, and I think, I don't think we have any N's this time. Nope. All right, uh, and since there's no questions on any of them, roll call, Mr. Slump. Mr. O'Brien? Aye. Dr. Modrak? Yes. Dr. Cordellino? Yes. Mr. Daughtry? Yes, I'm staying on K1, check number 3684. Mrs. Phantom? Yes. Mr. Rappaport? Abstain, section I. Yes to everything else. Ms. Zuckerman? Staying K4, item AB, yes to everything else. Mr. Palma? Yes. Mr. Grau? Yes, I think there's three abstentions. One is K7. As Karen indicated, I'll be going to the convention. And I think there's something on the travel. So if you could put me as abstention for that. And there's a bill from last year also. Abstention on that. The rest is yes. Okay? Thank you. Next item is Section P. We don't have any closed session tonight, so there'll be no Section P. Old business of the board. Anything at this point? All right, Section R. General board comment. New business. Charlie. Charlie. Yeah, I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I'm just, I just, I received an invitation from the Northern New Jersey Chinese Association, um, and they wanted me to share it with the board. Um, they are having a 2022 New Jersey flag raising ceremony on Sunday morning, October 2nd, at the Birchwood Manor in Whippany, and everyone on the board is invited. Um, it's from 10 to 12, Birchwood Manor. 111 North Jefferson Road. So if you're interested in attending, uh, let me know and I'll give you the contact information. Can you get that to Katina, send it to us, please. Absolutely. Anybody else have? Thanks. Yes. Yeah. So I, I was able to attend the September 11th memorial um, by the, you know, organized by the Armontville VFW, and it was truly beautiful. I really. Um, hope the community can maybe come next year. I know we kind of got rained out, but it was inside. But it really was a beautiful ceremony. Those gentlemen um, and the ladies do a wonderful job. 
Um, and the second thing I wanted to let my colleagues know, as well as the community, we now have a National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, and it's 998. And those who need help or guidance can now text for help. It's much easier sometimes to write your feelings than verbalize it. So it's a great tool that uh, the community can use. It's open 24 hours a day. Um, I believe they speak English and Spanish, but I please share it. I know many of you are on different boards and committees and the community with your children. It's something important to always know, 998. Public participation is an opportunity to ask questions about anything that was not on the agenda. Please feel come up and make your comments. Uh, identify who you are. And please use the mic, okay? Hi, my name is Diane O'Toole. I live in town. Uh, welcome, Dr. Gorman. Looking forward to hopefully having a much more productive year with you at the helm. Um, thank you all. I just want to follow up. Thank you for your apology and correction of what transpired in June. I was personally so dismayed at the level of aggression that was shown by a school administrator to a parent here. It was embarrassing. There is no reason ever to have that kind of behavior and the verbiage that was used. It was gaslighting. You don't talk to a parent that way and as a school administrator there needs to be some professional coaching to Mr. Pichuto because the terms that he used of ignorance, fear-mongering, I was listening to it and I was horrified. I am a parent that was not in favor of having a 15-year-old activist. My children have a cousin who's transgender. We've had many conversations about it. I wouldn't want them being taught in school because as a parent that's my conversation to have with them. That mentality that happens in society of if you're not with me, you're against me, showed through in his speech, and that is not acceptable behavior for any school administrator. I have been on the other side of it. I have spoken to my kids. I choose to not have a 15-year-old activist talking to my kids, and that's my right, and it should be respected. How he came out with that level of aggression, and it wasn't to me, but I was observing it, and the number of parents that were chanting and you know, literally ganging up and it felt like it was bullying was so unacceptable for anyone and I hope that there is some professional coaching. We all make mistakes and I understand that, but there needs to be some professional coaching of what is acceptable behavior and that kind of terminology should never ever be used by a principal or any school administrator in that capacity. Just as a follow up with that, this is a small forum here that was a much larger audience I truly, strongly feel that there needs to be an email correction sent out so that the larger audience is aware of the corrections made because there is still a belief going on by many of the parents and many of that audience that those statements made were correct and that needs to be corrected. So I plead okay. with the Board of Ed for those statements to be corrected to a larger audience. Thank you for your comments. Very much. Okay. My, my second point, thank you. My second point is I also feel that no student in this school should ever know a teacher's political affiliation, whether it's being alluded to or clearly stated, and it's happened multiple times in this high school as well as a middle school. And I'm not going to go into specifics here, but if the Board of Ed is in support of the fact that that should not be happening, I ask that a reminder be shared to every single teacher and staff in all of the schools that their political affiliation in no way, shape, or form, I don't care whatever color it is, whatever side it is, should never, ever be leaked out to the students. And that has happened on multiple occasions and not just to my children. So my ask is if the Board of Ed is in support of that, please send a reminder. I understand in this day and age, things are discussed in social media and in public forum that shouldn't be, in my opinion. It's, it's, it's running over into the schools now where the teachers are doing it. Thank, Thank you. you.
Got to speak up, okay. I got you. Good evening. Before I begin, I just want to thank uh, Dr. Gorman for his comments uh, and apology. My name is Marla Luciano. I'm a resident and taxpayer of Montville Township, and I'm here tonight to defend myself publicly and others in our community who have a right to voice our concerns without being bullied. I spoke previously before this board about Rebecca Brusoff, a 15-year-old activist that was invited to speak at Lazar Middle School. And to recap briefly, she was invited to speak under the guise of a program called Living Lessons. I expressed my dismay that any activist would be invited to speak. I specifically expressed my concerns over a 15-year-old's influence over the children, and I quoted Rebecca directly from her Facebook page. No hearsay. She stated, among other things, I challenged the students to go to their librarians for LGBTQ plus inclusive book recommendations and read them. That's her Facebook page. Those are not my words. It's not hearsay. I also expressed my concern over potentially having other activists invited to speak to the children and used Nicholas Sandman as an example. And as some of you may recall, Nicholas was a teenage activist who marched in Washington at a pro-life rally. I even held up a photo of Nicholas Sandman where he was wearing his MAGA hat so that there would be no mistake to whom I was referring. Now, after my four-minute short speech, the principal of Lazar Middle School, Michael Prezuto, proceeded to the microphone to begin his 12-minute long diatribe where he attacked me and anyone who dared disagree with him. The principal said, quote, ignorance and prejudice, those are his words, not mine, ignorance and prejudice had made its way to the microphone. Those words were directed at me as I was the only previous speaker to speak on the subject. Pretty harsh words coming from a principal to a taxpayer. But it doesn't end there. He went on to say, and I'm going to quote him again directly here, a reasonable person can only conclude that Rebecca is an advocate, not an activist. This, of course, implies that anyone referring to her as an activist is unreasonable. Now, in light of the evidence that I presented to all of you, I sent it, in a, actually I presented it to Dr. Gorman directly, um, I do have a copy of what I presented to him. What we now understand, Dr. Gorman mentioned, I'm going to pivot here from my speech because he changed things. Uh, we now do all understand that Rebecca is exactly what she purported to be. She's an activist, okay? Uh, it's in the papers that I had submitted to all of you. Uh, as he said it, she's an activist. CBS interviewed her, and the first line was that Rebecca Brusoff is a young transgender activist. Those are their words. Yahoo did a rod up. Same thing. They referred to her as an activist. As a matter of fact, Jamie Brusoff said Rebecca, quote, has appeared on Good Morning Britain, Good Morning Philadelphia, and received awards for her activism. Now, a simple Google search reveals all of this. So the question I have, and I know it won't be answered tonight, is why? Why would a principal speak in such a way as to convince all of you of something that's not true? Why, doesn't he and the pub why does he not want you and the public to know that Lazar Middle School invited an activist to speak to the children? Why does he acknowledge her personal pronouns but deny her her role as an activist? I want you to know that I still stand by 100% of what I said that night. I introduced facts. Facts that can be substantiated by a simple Google search. I call for accountability. I specifically ask that the individual overseeing the Living Lessons program should be removed. And quite frankly, after seeing the behavior of the principal of Lazar Middle School, I feel even more strongly about that position. As for the principal's claim that Lazar invited Nicholas Sandman to speak, Dr. Gordman addressed that. And a local law firm filed a Freedom of Information request. We know that is totally false. It's totally false, Mr. Pazuto's public claim that Lazar invited Sandman to speak. It is beyond concerning that a principal would have the audacity to attend a board meeting and behave like a schoolyard bully. His attempt to paint Rebecca as something other than what she claims to be is despicable. To misinform all of you, and the public is a travesty. And his attempt to label me and or my words as ignorant 
and prejudiced is not only false, but clearly an attempt to silence me. He accuses anyone who disagrees with his decision to invite an activist to speak to our young, impressionable middle school children as intentionally trying to quote, I'm going to quote him again here, stir up fear and discomfort. He calls them, quote, misinformed. In light of all of the evidence presented, clearly I'm not misinformed. And let's not forget the principal's attempt to label those who disagree as unreasonable. I'll quote him again directly here. A reasonable person can only conclude that Rebecca is an advocate, not an activist. How absolutely egregious. Principals are educated people. So are we to believe that Mr. Tutu somehow... Yes, sir. I know you want me to wrap it up, but sir, he had 12 minutes to drive on me. I'm going to... Very short. Try to wrap I'm it wrapping up, okay? it up. I'm wrapping it up. Are we somehow to believe that Mr. Brizuto had no idea that Rebecca is a self-proclaimed activist? Are we to believe that he and the woman running the Living Lessons Program somehow had no idea that even the national media sources label her a young transgender, transgender activist, that she's, a want, she's won awards for her activism? I don't believe any of that. And in conclusion, to wrap this up for you, sir, students, parents, taxpayers and members of our community have a right to address their concerns to this board without being attacked, labeled, or bullied. And allowing that principal to go on a rant, attacking anyone that disagreed with him, is quite frankly completely unacceptable. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Marlo. Thank you for your time. Mike. And good luck, Dr. Gorman. My first question, I have two questions. The first being the security issue that I raised a minute ago. I was happy to hear or to see that you are making changes to Lazar, where I have a six-year-old, sixth-grade granddaughter at Lazar. I have another fourth grader at Cedar Hill. Beyond that, or in that light, back in June, Dr. Rothtar was asked, about having police in the school armed. She said part of her answer was, we decided not to do it. Maybe at that time they decided not to do it, or you decided, because it was not in the budget. So I'm curious, although I like to see what's happening at Lazar, what further actions are you, going to, are you contemplating, particularly armed guards in the schools? Can someone comment now on where you stand are you done with that discussion? Still in the process, Charlie? Where are you on that? I think we're still in the process, Scott. And when the time comes to make it public, the superintendent will have a report. Okay. okay? Good. Um, and I was happy to see, I guess Karen mentioned, the threat assessment team is being formed. Will that be part of the discussion? What was the question, John? Well, in Karen's report, she mentioned the threat assessment team is being formed. Just, 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 I just want to clarify. So the threat assessment is, is a the state, and all schools are going to be required to do this by next year. But that's to, uh, it's not the way you're thinking about it. It's to identify students that may be, um, you know, on, on the radar or that we have to look into or further, further stuff like that. It's not an actual tactical threat assessment. Okay. My second point concerns where we are, and I apologize. I attended the June meeting, but I've missed many of this in the last six months or a year. Where do we stand with the mandated uh, education, uh, sex education, gender, whatever, CRT? But that where that, that right? presentation was made at the last meeting. Okay, can you and see of our, where we are? Our, no, you get, this is the time for your comments. Check the website. It's all on there, Scott. Okay, right, Andrea? The whole thing is on there that she made a very comprehensive report. Okay, the parents have the right to opt out of those requirements. They have that right. They do. Okay. Um, I know East Hanover, what they did was they scheduled all that for the last... Yeah, year. I know. And we're not doing did it that way. That? We're not doing it that way. Andrew has laid out the way we're doing it. Okay, so I should check the website for details mm -hmm. on this? If you have any like questions, it. give Andrew a call. Okay, but I like East Hanover way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Scott.
questions at this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn, please. Second. A motion to adjourn and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you again, members of the public, for coming. Our next meeting uh, will be in October. Please check the website or the calendar. And again, have a safe evening. <laughs>